morning commuters. How are you all today? So, it's 74 degrees. Woo! 74! It's cooling off. You know what I don't understand? <laughs> Tell us, Julie, what don't you understand? Here's what I don't understand. I don't understand how people can complain all winter long about how cold it is. It's gray. It's icky. It's yucky. It's I'm freezing. And then when we get to the heat, when we get to the beautiful summer, when we, you know, and quite frankly, I haven't noticed that many mosquitoes this year. When we get to the great days, then they're complaining about the heat. What is wrong with you? I mean, stop complaining. Why do you need all these complaints in your life? Why? Why? Listen to me, I'm complaining because you're complaining. Stop complaining. So, here's the thing. Um, I was reading the June 20th issue of New Yorker. Yes, I know. It is July and I am not caught up with all my magazines. I've been busy. It's summertime. So I was reading this article in here. There's a couple articles that I was reading in, and I'm only going to discuss one of them. Um, but it's about how the occupied territory, you see that? Okay. Um, it's the Republican elite struggles over whether to resist Trump or to capitulate. This is really interesting. Because I know they, they talk about how Paul Ryan's in a bad spot. No, I'm sorry. Paul Ryan's not in a bad spot. Either, if, if you want to take all of your morals and all of your values and shove them in a corner and just play politics, then you endorse Donald Trump. Then you say vote for him. But if you want to stand with the righteous, then you have to say, no, no, I am not going to endorse this man. I can't. I can't. I have morals and I cannot endorse a man who is racist and sexist, who uh, has no respect or regard for our constitution, who just, no. Now, this article doesn't even go into the fact not well it, it kind of glosses over it. the fact that Trump is sexist and racist it kind of glosses over what it does talk about is that Trump's ideas are not exactly Republican ideas but here's and and it's giving Trump credit for Paul Ryan coming out and saying that maybe the Republican Party shouldn't have been talking about makers and takers. Really? That's what it took? It took a racist? I'd like to think that it took the fact that Bernie Sanders was kicking some butt. And had we had open primaries, because if you took a look, good look about uh, open primaries, or how he did in states where you didn't have to register as a Democrat, um, he did better than Hillary. In states where you do have to register, he didn't. Um, there were also a lot, I mean, there was a, I'm going to vote for Hillary. I'm just going to say it now. I'm voting for Hillary. I'm not happy about it. I'd much rather have Bernie, but we don't have a three party system. I was kind of hoping with this election that it would destroy these two parties. Doesn't look like that's going to happen, but I cannot do anything that would put Donald Trump in the White House. I can't. But anyway, getting back to this article, I am really surprised because when I was growing up, we read Time and Newsweek. And mostly Newsweek. And the Tribune. Although my dad would get the Sun-Times on his way to work. But we never had it delivered. But he would pick up the Sun-Times and read the Sun-Times. I always preferred the Sun-Times over the Tribune, which is sad because when I was growing up, the president and publisher of the Chicago Tribune was my cousin. <laughs> so, but I still like the Sun-Times better. But we had a subscription to the Tribune. I am just, I'm. I, it never dawned on me that things like Vanity Fair 
and The New Yorker and New York Magazine had such great in-depth articles about what's going on. They, they, this article, I think it's four pages long. And it's not four pages where you have to turn to the back after you're done and, you know, one, well, that's got a big picture, but one, two, three, no, I'm wrong, four, I'm doing this while I'm driving, five, six, six pages they have devoted to the Republic, the, the GOP and Donald Trump. And you got to read it. It's a fascinating article. This guy is actually this price. I think he's a senator. I'd have to look again. Um, he act because I meant to talk about this a couple days ago when I finished the article. He he actually says that uh, Hillary Clinton's more dangerous than Donald Trump. Are you kidding me? Are these guys that delusional? Hillary Clinton's going to keep the status quo. I don't necessarily want the status quo, but that's what she's going to do. The Republican Party, who have spent the last seven and a half years fighting with our president and not doing anything to help this country and voting against a lot of things that could help this country, thinks that Hillary Clinton is da more dangerous than Donald Trump, a man who has no respect for the Constitution, he has no respect for people of other races. He is, um, he is uh, bringing out the absolute worst in people. And I'm not saying he's causing racism, he's not. He's just the catalyst for racism suddenly being right up front. Now, thanks to Donald Trump, people think it's okay to do this. It's not. He, he keeps claiming he's uniting. But he's going to divide us even more. Like we aren't divided enough already. And I, I, it just boggles the mind. I don't think Hillary Clinton's going to harm our country. I don't think she's the best candidate. I thought Bernie Sanders was the best candidate. But she's not going to harm our country. Donald Trump will harm us in the eyes of the world, in the eyes of anybody in this country who's sane. He's going to harm us. So I just don't, anyway, but it's crazy. It's just crazy. So, um, and the big news yesterday, which you probably already know, which is why I'm just going to mention it briefly, Bernie Sanders came out and agreed to campaign for Hillary. So I hope this means that the Sanders, uh, people supporting Sanders will support Hillary because we have to stop Trump. That's really it. But get I know you could probably find it online, but get the New Yorker, the article, and read it because I think you're going to like it. I think it's very interesting. Um, it's nice to read in-depth articles as opposed to just the swoosh that we get now. I don't know what to call it, but we just get like, we just kind of skim the surface and we get sound bites and I, I just would prefer the in-depth. I don't get to read, I obviously, I'm way behind. So, but what I like to do is go back because I like to read the letters to the editor and see what's in there. So, have a great day, commuters.